Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, Luke Mick here, and welcome to today's Mail Day, brought to you by Kino Lorber, or more so, brought to me by Kino Lorber, because this box arrived at my house. But I am going to open it for you all, on camera here, because that's what you do in a Blu-ray haul video. So let's open this baby up. So Kino Lorber is holding a spring sale until sometime in mid-April. I want to say it ends on April 19th, so you should have quite a bit of time to uh, look through the selection and place your orders if you're seeing this video just now and we're unaware of the sale. If I'm being honest with you, it's definitely one of the best opportunities to buy Kino Lorber titles. I really only ever buy them directly from their website during their sales because they actually offer really great prices during their sales. So if you want to grab any titles from Kino, now is definitely a good time to do that because this sale has an enormous selection and uh, an enormous array of great prices. So let's get into my box, the uh, haul that I will be unveiling here. I believe there are 21 titles in this box. So this is going to be a doozy. It's going to be a big one. So let's start with the first one off the top here, The Land That Time Forgot. Really, I was just captivated by this cover. It looks like uh, a wonderful dinosaur island adventure. I did look at its letterbox page and I realized that the director of this film is the director of Motel Hell, which is a campy little 70s, I believe, horror, somewhat slasher type film that I've seen a couple of times. It's kind of a cult favorite, but not really one of my personal favorites. But this just looked to me like a, a fun adventure film, and I loved the cover so much. It looks like it's kind of supposed to be a little bit like the Planet of the Apes or something, or maybe some King Kong influence, uh, you know, a classic adventure stranded on an island surrounded by enormous reptiles type of movie. Jenny, I have absolutely nothing to say about this film actually. It's truly the most like random film that I bought, I think I would say out of this entire haul, but I wanted to add something 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 to the cart that I was completely unfamiliar with and something that I just felt like just taking a chance on. I think it was one of the cheaper items if I recall correctly. And I just thought, well, why not give it a shot? It may have been going out of print too. I can't remember for sure. I think I ordered a couple of items from there uh, while supplies last page, but most of it was from the primary spring sale. And that's something I do want to mention is that if you're ever curious about getting Kino Blu-rays and DVDs or 4Ks, uh, whatever you're interested in on a regular basis, they do have a while supplies last page that's always being updated. So any titles they have that are going out of print, they put them at sale prices and they have like a whole storefront or page, if you will, with those items. So if you ever are looking for cheap Kino titles that won't be cheap for much longer, check out their uh, While Supplies last page. Chosen Survivors. I think this cover is really awesome. I love the uh, design of this red bat here, and the film sounded really interesting. It, it kind of sounded like it could have been like a Twilight Zone episode, but it's a 1970s thriller where I think the world has gone through a sort of nuclear holocaust and these people live many 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 feet many well 1758 feet i wanted to say miles but 1758 feet is nowhere near a mile so so they're just some arbitrarily chosen number of feet below the ground i guess and it's a film that uh it's what is happening i think there's a sickness going around down there or something is going wrong underground for these survivors of a nuclear holocaust can't recall if there were any cast members I recognized from that, but yes, that is Chosen Survivors. <laughs> Nosferatu. I told myself like a week before this sale started that the next time Kino holds a sale, I definitely want to grab Nosferatu, and then my luck, the sale began a week later. So it's been a long time since I've watched Nosferatu. I've only seen it once. It was on Netflix when I watched it, and it was probably seven or eight years ago. I knew that Kino had a pretty good transfer out there with a boatload of special features. There are two discs included in this set here. And uh, yeah, yeah. Nosferatu, a gothic horror classic. Pasolini by Abel Ferreira, or is it Abel Ferreira? I've always said Abel, but I've heard it pronounced a couple of different ways in recent months. So curious, what is the correct pron pronunciation for his name. This is a biopic directed by Ferreira. It came out in 2013 or something like that. Stars Willem Dafoe. It's about the filmmaker behind Solo and his final days of life, I believe. And uh, yeah, I, I grabbed it because 
you gotta love uh, Defoe and Ferreira collaboration, and it just seemed like something that would be interesting to me. It's a film about a filmmaker, so that's always something I am interested in checking out. I may pronounce this next one incorrectly, but the Mephisto Waltz, or is it Mephisto Waltz? I'm not sure which. This film I was going to grab, or I at least looked at during the October sale at Kino. Devil in the music in this sleek and scary piece of movie necromancy. Sounds like a perfect thing for me and my ghouly friends, so we will buy Blu-ray at Curve. But I didn't grab it, but I came across it again this time and decided to just get it because I think the cover is really interesting looking, and from what I read about it, it sounds like a sort of horror drama, maybe in the same vein as like Rosemary's Baby, it's something about a deal or conversation with the devil, it's from the early 70s, just sounded like something that uh, I would be very interested in, so I decided to grab it. Love that cover, I, I just think it's so intriguing, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Clockers, a Spike Lee joint, I love this cover, it really catches my eye, as does the cast. It's incredible. Harvey Keitel, John Turturro, and Delroy Lindo. I heard that the transfer, if you look on Blu-ray.com, for this release is pretty bad. I think Kino sourced it from whichever studio owns the rights. Universal, I guess it's a bad source, and it looks pretty rough. Uh, but I really want to see this film after reading about it. It's about hardworking drug dealers, and it's, uh, I think, a more underseen Spike Lee film. So I'm very interested in it. And like I said, great cast. Just a lot of reasons, uh, a lot of indicators letting me know that, you know, this is something I might enjoy watching. So although it does have a bad transfer, I decided to just go in on it because I guess there aren't, probably aren't many other options to watch this film on physical media. Clockers, Kino Lorber edition, uh, hopefully it gets an upgrade someday, but for now that's just gonna have to do. A Raro video release, Nightmare City by Umberto Lenzi. I truly don't know much about this film in particular, but I have really found that I love the work of Lenzi over the past year or two, and whenever I have the opportunity to find more of his films on Blu-ray, I do not hesitate to purchase them, and it's really nice that it comes with this slip cover. It's always great to get a slip with your purchases. I don't know if there are any uh, actors or anything in this film. Hugo Stiglitz. Hugo Stiglitz is in this film. Is that... Is Hugo Stiglitz literally... the Inglorious Bastards character? That's the character's name. That's not the actor's name, right? Did, did Tarantino name that character off of the actor that leads in this film? Okay, that's interesting. I wouldn't be surprised if he did that. Uh, that name just popped out to me and I had to say it without thinking about what that actually meant. But starring Hugo Shiglitz, Nightmare City, directed by Umberto Lenzi, looks like so much fun to me. We got a Jess Franco film here, Neurosis, also subtitled Revenge in the House of Usher. Oddly enough, I've been watching a lot of the fall of the House of Usher film adaptations lately, it seems. So to kind of continue on with that trend, I decided to just grab this film, and also because I think I've watched all of the Jess Franco films I own, except um, he did do, I think, two of the Fu Manchu sequels, the later ones. Haven't watched those yet, but all of the standalone Jess Franco films that I own, I think I've watched. So I wanted to grab another one to have on deck for viewing when I feel the time is right. So that is um, Neurosis. You know, it, it could be a piece of shit. He's directed, or he directed, I should say, so many films, a lot of them garbage, but they do have... A, a sort of, I don't know, energy and, and style to them that I find really um, unique in some ways and really quite interesting. Okay, I didn't uh, realize I actually grabbed this one, but this is a Scorpion release. It is called The Mafu Cage, and what was this one about? about, about. It stars Lee Grant and Carol Kane, and it's a psychological thriller. A mentally unbalanced sissy virtually lives in the exotic Mafu Cage, crowded with hot house plants and strange African artifacts. I'm just checking out these artifacts. I hear this is pretty good. Like, I heard that it's actually a, a pretty interesting psychological thriller from the late 70s, 1977. Uh, so yeah, The Mafu Cage, a film by Karen Arthur. Um, I'm trying to explain why I decided to buy this, and I don't know, I don't know, I just thought it sounded kind of interesting, and I thought maybe it's uh, some sort of hidden gem in the, uh, the treasure trove 
that is the 1970s uh, in cinema. So yeah, I totally forgot about this one as well. It's very similar, I think, to the first film that I showed in this video. This one being called The Land Unknown. This is a black and white late 50s era dinosaur action adventure island type movie you know kind of like in the same vein as like a godzilla or a king kong more so because in king kong they actually go to some exotic island and, and find the the eighth wonder of the world that's what he is right king kong is the eighth wonder i think what are all the wonders of the world i'm gonna google that uh during the editing of this video and I'll let you all know what all the wonders of the world are up until this point. But this is The Land Unknown. When I saw this one, I, I just knew I could not pass it up. We got Baxter, baby. Beware the dog who thinks. I love dog horror movies, and I haven't even seen one of the most famous ones. Cujo is probably one that pops into most people's minds. I recently watched Zoltan, Hound of Dracula, which is a Kino Lorber release, and I loved it. I just love when they're able to get the dogs to do so many different stunts and what? I love when they try to make the dogs look menacing and evil, but they look so happy and obedient. I just think it's so funny. I love it when they when they try to make dogs look bad because it's really hard to make a dog look evil if you ask me. It just cracks me up so much. I just get such a kick out of it. This is a French uh, horror film with the dog, which is uh, interesting. I haven't seen a French dog horror movie. This is amazing. You got the target dog. He's thinking, is he reading people's minds? Is he blowing people's heads up like scanners? I don't know. I'll have to watch it, but the premise already my imagination's going crazy as to what this film could have in store. So Baxter, baby, cannot wait for that. I had never heard of this film before, but it sounds absolutely fascinating to me. It is called The Last of England, and that is Tilda Swinton. This is a very, very early Tilda Swinton film. It was released in, I want to say, 19... 87 I was gonna say 89 but even earlier and the photography in this film looks so it's so unique and abstract it was filmed on like I can't remember the I'm gonna make all this shit up right now but it was something like they filmed it on super 8 or 16 millimeter or something and then they transferred it to like tapes like VHS tapes and like that's how the film naturally looks they made the film like intentionally look rough and dirty and a little messy and just really off kilter and it just sounds so fascinating the images that I saw while I was researching the, the films I was buying for this sale just looked so interesting to me and I, I can't believe I'd never heard of this film before I, I hope it doesn't disappoint but it's it just seems so um, unlike a lot of other films it seems very experimental so yeah that is the last of england and it's also just so interesting seeing tilda swinton in such an early role because i don't think i've seen tilda swinton in anything pre-2000s in all honesty so that should be really a fun one to watch omega syndrome the cover is i think pretty self-explanatory you can kind of tell what type of film this is going to be i read that it's about uh xgis who are hunting down and killing a gang of white supremacists who have stolen one of their daughters or something sounds like an ultra violent action exploitation movie from it, it sounds like an 80s movie when did it come out 86 yep right in the middle of the 80s Sounds like something that would be fun. Uh, uh, so yeah, that is Omega Syndrome. The Day After, this is a TV movie that was released in the early 80s, and it's a sort of Cold War era um, cautionary tale, nuclear holocaust tale, that basically shows the world, or shows a portion of the world, in the few days after a nuclear holocaust. And my mom recently talked about this film, and she was in grade school, she was like 13 when this would have come out, and she remembers seeing it and people talking about it at school and how, like, scary of a movie it was at that time, at least for her at that age. So her talking about that recently made me finally uh, pull the trigger on it and order it. I've always been captivated by this cover. I've known of this film for quite a number of years now, and uh, I now finally own it. And just based off these stills here, um, if you can see that very clearly, looks like it's really well shot. Like, I really like the lighting and the coloring, so... 
yeah, this should be a pretty interesting film, The Day After. Something I love about Kino Lorber and looking through their enormous catalog of films during their sales is that I find films that I didn't even know were out on Blu-ray, one of them being Dario Argento's The Card Player. This is a 2000s era Argento film, and I think it's supposed to be one of his better newer films, and it stars Liam Cunningham, of Game of Thrones, I think that's where most people would probably recognize him from, and I think it's supposed to be a pretty standard through and through uh, Argento type giallo thriller. I think I've heard this film is more like his older films than some of his other more recent work. So very interested to check this one out. I like Liam Cunningham a lot. The slipcover is amazing. I love the art on this thing, and yeah, just a really cool release. I'll always go in on more uh, Argento. I wanted to say Cumming Cunningham. Him too. I mean, if he's in a film, you know, it makes me interested to watch it. But yes, any Argento, uh, I'm basically down for the ride. So yeah. The Soldier. Uh, was this one going out of print or was this just on sale? I don't remember exactly, but doesn't this guy look just perfectly average as an action hero? Like, he just looks like the flattest and most dull boring guy for an action star and that's really the reason i bought it i love watching a bad action movie with a star who just has no charisma and is just there to be i guess uh, a handsome face i don't know i maybe i'm giving this guy too much crap who is he ken wall ken wall i saw his name on omega syndrome i think he stars in omega syndrome too i think uh well okay uh yeah so Maybe he's a good action star, looks like he got a few acting gigs back in the 80s, so yeah, I don't know, The Soldier covers, it looks like a James Bond ripoff, he looks a little bit like Timothy Dalton to me, that's that's another reason why I bought this, it reminded me of like a Timothy Dalton Bond poster, so yeah, I don't know, The Soldier looks like there's some good explosions, so maybe this one will be cool. Man with a Movie Camera, this is a really old film, a 1929 USSR black and white film, and it's, and it's an experimental documentary, I think. I think most of the film is just footage of people living their lives and just uh, a town being, you know, just living, a living city. Uh, there is a different Blu-ray out there for this brought to us by Flickr Alley. I don't know why I have to sound like I'm some sort of baseball announcer when I say that, but Flickr Alley has a Blu-ray release of this film, and I think it's superior. It's supposed to be a better transfer and from a better source and just be of a higher quality, both visually and from a sound standpoint. But I decided to just grab this Kino edition because it's way cheaper and I can at least watch the film and, and sort of get a chance to see what it's all about for like a lower price before I decide to go in on the more expensive Flickr Alley one if I ever decide to do that. There are two different soundtracks for this film, I think, and I don't remember if this edition has both options or if it only has one, but I think the Flickr Alley version has both soundtrack versions of the film. But this is supposed to be a classic and I really, I don't think I'd ever heard of it until I was looking through the sale just last week and I saw this cover and I was like, wow, that really catches my eye. That looks pretty interesting. Did some reading up on the film and decided that it sounded really cool. And uh, yeah, that is Man With a movie camera. Hopefully it's uh, awesome. We're getting pretty close to the end here. We have uh, another Scorpion releasing here. It is Rituals with Hal Hallbrook and Lawrence Dane. I don't know who Lawrence Dane is. Maybe if I saw his face or looked at his letterbox or IMDb, I'd recognize him from other films he's been in. Uh, really cool cover here. You know, it's a pretty horrifying image seeing a bearded man tied to a tree or a plank or something while on fire with the big red font here the the word rituals or the title of the film rituals from what i read about it after um after i saw this on their website it sounds a little bit like deliverance it came out in 1977 so it would have been a couple of years after a deliverance so it might be a sort of deliverance uh inspired maybe even a deliverance ripoff type horror movie not sure exactly i shouldn't be making assumptions here but uh yes rituals it's people in the woods being attacked two more here Rocco and His Brothers, this is a film by Lucino Visconti, and I know I've heard that name before, but I don't think I've seen any of his films before, and this was a bit 
more expensive. I shouldn't say it was like pricey or anything. It was only two or three dollars more than the rest of these titles. But uh, I I just bought it because I liked the sort of I, I, whatever you would call this this type of painting. It's kind of like a watercolor type painting. It just seemed like something that would be a bit of a cut above the rest. And the the letterbox scores are really great. They're really high. And it just uh, was something that I, it seemed like a strange item. It looked so different from a lot of the other titles I bought during the sale. And it looked like something that really would set itself apart. So this is Rocco and his brothers and it's presented by Martin Scorsese. So that's always a good indicator if he's behind a film and bringing a film, bringing remastered versions of films to uh, you know, the market, I think that makes, uh, that's a good indicator of a good film, generally. And the last one here is another Argento film that I also didn't really know about in general, I guess, and I didn't know it was on Blu-ray. It's called Sleepless. Sleepless, another newer film from him, or more recent, I should say. Uh, it came out in 2001, and it stars Max von Sydow, of course, of Ingmar Bergman fame. So that's amazing. I didn't know that Max and Dario made a film together that's completely mind-boggling to me and very interesting, and uh, hopefully it's good. Is there anyone else in this film that I recognize? Uh, not, not on first glance here, but yeah, another um, hopefully more giallo-type Dario Argento thriller horror film from 2001. And starring Max von Sydow. So that's very, very interesting. Sleepless. And that's everything that I bought from Kino Lorber for this spring sale. Something I really like about Kino, and you may have noticed this while I was showing each title, is that not every single one of those was a Kino Lorber Studio Classics release. They have a lot of sub-labels and, and, I guess, partner labels, you could call them, like Redemption Films, Scorpion releasing, sometimes they have code red things on their website. They have the Kino Lorber Classics releases, which are a little bit different from the Kino Lorber Studio Classics. They have just a lot of different films, and that's what's so great about them as a label is that they might not always have a ton of supplemental features, but they have such an enormous catalog of films that generally have pretty good transfers. So I would recommend uh, checking out the sale and grabbing a few items if you are so interested. And just to provide a little bit of an update for the channel, I think we're going to be seeing a lot of Blu-ray update videos and unboxings for a little while because Indicator recently had a sale. I bought quite a bit during that sale and that box should be arriving to me in the next couple of days. I do plan on doing an unboxing video for that. Plus, I am so far behind on my Blu-ray updates, but it's I really wanted to do a February and March Blu-ray update video, but I did not have the time, but I have so much cool stuff that I would love to show in a video like that. So I might do like a really big February through March Blu-ray update video. So let me know down below which videos you're interested in seeing if you want to see more update videos like that or if you'd be more interested in seeing like review type videos. I also wanted to do a sort of video where I would talk about films I've been watching recently and just sort of talk through them uh, on camera and just give you all my thoughts. I do review on Letterboxd as well from time to time. I log everything I watch. I don't always write a big review. Sometimes I do, but you can follow me on Letterboxd to stay up to date with the films I'm watching and what I think about them. And also you can follow me on Instagram where I provide channel updates from time to time. Usually I put stuff on the story. Sometimes I post what I'm watching at the very moment. You know, Instagram stuff. And that's pretty much everything I have for this video. I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, please hit that like button. It would really help me out. And subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed and want to see the upcoming videos I just talked about. And that's all I have. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. And I will talk to you later.